Broadcasting from Sydney, Australia, this is Front and Centre with Emilio Garcia. Brought to you by the Unshackled.net. A homeowner has spoken after another terrifying wave of gang violence in Melbourne. Her home, you saw this in the news, was ransacked and a visitor was held hostage by a gang of eight African youths. Now, people are scared to go out to restaurants at the night time because they're followed home by these gangs. A 31-year-old tradesman has spoken of the moment he helped catch the man he says tried to steal his sports car in Footscray. The Prime Minister has weighed into the debate over youth crime in Melbourne, declaring there is a gang problem and it's the Premier's fault. He claims a lack of political leadership is preventing police from tackling the issue. This is a failure of the Andrews government. Huge gang of violent African teenagers has run wild along the St Kilda foreshore, fighting each other and bashing and robbing beachgoers. Unfortunately, last night we've had uh, a large number of uh, youth attend uh, of African appearance who have engaged in antisocial behaviour. They've committed crimes. They've been involved in uh, a number of assaults on the foreshore of St Kilda. A new wave of gang violence is terrorising Melbourne. The Apex Crime Group is hell-bent on its carjackings, armed robberies and violent home invasions. In Victoria, it has become clear that there is an issue with violence on behalf of a very small population of people. Young Sudanese immigrants seem to be responsible for a relatively high number of crimes. Fearing racism, many in Australian media have brushed over the subject or claim it's of little significance as I discuss with Tim Wilms, Editor-in-Chief of The Unshackled. Crime Statistics Agency, and uh, last year uh, their crime statistics revealed that uh, those who were uh, born in Sudan, uh, they made up 1% of uh, all offences committed in the state of Victoria, despite only making up 0.1% uh, uh, of the population. And we'll be talking to him about what is being called the African Youth Crime Wave after this short break. I want to take a second and ask you to go to theunshackled.net and download your free ebook, The Unshackled Battlefield. Learn about the founding principles of The Unshackled and what made the organization what it is today. And since I have you, don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks, and now back to the show. Welcome back to Front and Center. I'm Emilio Garcia. On today's episode, we're talking about African youth crime in Victoria with Tim Wilms. There was an error while recording, and my side of the audio was not properly recorded. I'll tell you everything that I said, though, throughout the interview. I asked Tim what we know about the crime wave so far. To, to look at the uh, statistics, so we have in Victoria the Crime Statistics Agency, and uh, last year uh, their crime statistics revealed that uh, those who were uh, born in Sudan, uh, they made up 1% of uh, all offences committed in the state of Victoria, despite only making up 0.1% uh, uh, of the population. The overall crime rate of the state has gone down. However, uh, violent crimes, the ones that we're most concerned about, such as carjackings and home invasions, they've uh, significantly increased. Like, for example, the uh, the crime that's reduced uh, most significantly over the past year has been uh, arson. And uh, I, I don't remember seeing uh, uh, many arson atta attacks, attacks on the news. So um, certainly what we're seeing it, uh, on the news is, you know, what's actually happening. One percent of crime may seem insignificant, but considering it's a whole state with almost six million people living in it, the picture changes quite a bit. So the question is, what is being done to solve this issue? Uh, Peter Dutton has, um, well, he's already um, uh, deported some uh, African uh, criminals and he's vowed to uh, deport more, which of course is, has, uh, he's been accused of racism, saying, oh, he wants to, you know, ship uh, these poor, uh, poor black children over back to war barrier mm -hmm. Africa. It's worth also pointing out that uh, Peter Dutton, he's deported criminals of all colours. I mean, he uh, a, a lot of the uh, the criminals we deport uh, from Australia are right? New Zealanders. If you're the, the government of a country and you've got an opportunity to basically mm -hmm. kick out criminals of the country, you're going to take it. I mean, uh, if they're you know, not, if they don't have to be your problem anymore, then uh, you do everything you can to uh, get rid of them. The idea that somehow deporting people, uh, once they have broken the laws of a country, 
is somehow racist is laughable. A country has the right to deport anyone who's not complying with their laws. Of course, however, this has led to accusations of racism. All of this sounded very worrisome, but at the same time, doing my research, I had to take some of the points that the opposition has made. 1% uh, of crime is, strictly speaking, not exactly statistically significant. Crime all around Victoria, in fact, is going down. And it may be an exaggeration to call it a crime wave. I had to push back with Tim on this point. What you've just said to me is, uh, you know, what a lot of the left are saying, that, you know, there's no problem, we should just, you know, carry on uh, as before. And, you know, to the, you know, victims that are, you know, piling up, I mean, you know, that's just the, the biggest insult to them. I I'll put it to you, why should we, you know, just continue on as normal? I'll dive into that exchange after this short break. You may not know this, but The Unshackled has its own store. The Unshackled leadership and contributors have created some excellent products so you can take a little bit of us home with you. Go to uprightmarket.com and get, oh, I don't know, the Lefty Tears mug? Lefty Tears are always delicious, but without a proper vessel, they'll go to waste. Thanks, and now, back to the show. Welcome back to Front and Center, I'm Emilio Garcia. At this point, I had pushed back on Tim a bit asking about the gravity of the situation, and that maybe a lot of people are exaggerating it. 1% of crime is certainly preoccupying, especially considering that it's a very small portion of the population, but it's not an immediate threat to public safety. Tim had a different take. Well, I just explained to you that that 1% is most likely higher because of you know, those of Sudanese uh, background uh, you know, who were uh, born in Australia. And like I said, this you know, crime wave is you know, con concentrated. So basically, uh, what you've just said to me is uh, you know, what a lot of the left are saying, that you know, there's no problem, we should just you know, carry on uh, as before. And you know, to the you know, victims that are you know, piling up, I mean, you know, that's just the, the biggest insult to them. I mean, you know, a, lot of the, a lot of these people have moved away from you know, uh, you know, Tarnit and Cranbourne, and a lot of them, are, there's also been reports of you know, children you know, sleeping in their parents' room because they're scared of uh, you know, ho uh, home invasions. I mean, you know, uh, ju uh, just because you know, most of the rest of Melbourne is safe, it doesn't mean we should uh, you know, not take action. I mean, what, what if, I, I'll put it to you, why should we, you know, just continue on as normal? I explained to Tim that I wasn't trying to belittle the experiences of the victims. Uh, of course, we empathize with them. Uh, but I'm trying to understand the numbers of the opposition. How can it be called a crime uh, and called to be such a threat to public security when crime across Victoria is down and this crime wave supposedly only represents 1% of crime. Well, I just gave you that uh, poll in, in Tarnate and Cranbourne and I've given you that anecdotal evidence of, you know, how people have, you know, reacted to the, the home invasions that it might not have happened to them, but uh, pe uh, people around them. Uh, I mean, uh, tr trying to sort of make this, you know, uh, detach it from, uh, you know, the victims, like, I, I don't see how that's possible. For the record, anecdotal evidence is not a measure of public safety, but it is a measure of public sentiment. It's very worrisome to have a public in fear to carry out their daily business and routines the way they used to because of what they're hearing is happening in their neighborhoods. This brings us to the centrist conclusion segment of the program. Victoria's crime wave is not to be ruined. Lives are being affected in tangible ways. When the media and the police attempt to cover up the issue, as to not seem racist, they are keeping racial minorities in dangerous situations. PR is not an excuse for inaction. That being said, there is anecdotal evidence that would indicate that the crime wave is much larger than it is, but there is no concrete evidence to prove it. Calling it a crime wave may be a bit of a stretch, despite the need for attention regarding such a small part of the population causing such a huge amount of harm. Tim Wilms is the founder and editor-in-chief of the Unshackled, and I thank him for being on the show. That's the end of Front and Century. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you to the Unshackled for allowing us to use their platform. If you have any ideas or opinions, tweet at me at FRNT and Center, or find me on Facebook. I'll read the most interesting comments on the air. For example, this one. I know that uh, there was an article released, a poll, regarding the transgender 
person who is fighting uh, girls in Texas, and uh, there was an inaccuracy that was brought to my attention. Thank you so much for bringing that to my attention. We did print a retraction, and it is no longer on the page. Remember to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. There are always two sides to the story, so keep it central. Thanks for tuning in to Front and Center. Please visit frontandcenter.net.au for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net. And keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.